Hi, and welcome to the sixth episode of the Emmy Awards. Eventually, I'm going to have to stop counting down and saying what episodes they are, because I'm not going to be like, this is the, like, 50th episode. Um, if I get to 50, I, I want to. I'm enjoying this. Um, yeah. Um, just right off the bat, this is not a Bachelor podcast. Um, this episode is about The Bachelor, but generally this is not a podcast about The Bachelor. It's just a podcast where I talk about whatever I want to talk about. And this week it's The Bachelor. Um, so my name's Emmy. If you're stumbling upon this video because you wanted to hear what other people were saying about The Bachelor finale, my name's Emmy. I do this podcast once a week where I just I talk about my life, my opinions on things. I've only been doing it for like six episodes now, so so that in like five weeks ish. So I am figuring it out as I go. And yeah, I don't have a niche yet. I know a lot about The Bachelor and I like talking about it. And the finale was like a lot to digest. And um if there's anything I've realized, it's that my parents get tired of me just like regurgitating and like word vomiting to them about how I feel about The Bachelor. So this is, this is, yeah. I, I just wanted a place where I could talk once a week about whatever I wanted for an hour uninterrupted. And so that's, that's where I am. Um, if you watched the last episode with my sister, um, it was a different location. I'm back to regular scheduled programming. Um, although I do miss New York. So if you do not know anything about The Bachelor, um, you can either skip this video or you can keep watching and just hear my opinions on things and maybe, I don't know. Um, and if you do watch The Bachelor, this is not a recap, okay? I don't know how to do that. I'm not a recapper. I am simply here to say how I feel about things. So if you haven't seen the episode or you haven't seen a recap and you're like, what is she talking about? I'm sorry. I am going to explain some things, but um, I don't want to like recap everything. If you want really quick and easy to understand recaps um, that are not like hour long podcasts, I recommend watching Bachelor Fan Takes videos. He breaks down episode to episode really like easy, easy to digest and you get the gist of everything anyway. Um, He's great, love him. But um, I'm just sharing my opinion. So if you don't watch The Bachelor, this episode means nothing to you. And if you do watch The Bachelor, and that's how you found this, this is not a Bachelor episode, a podcast in general. This is a Bachelor episode. Um, no hate to Bachelor podcasts. I just listen to a lot of them. And I don't feel like I particularly have something very interesting to say about like everything. So I don't want that to be my niche. Um, yeah, like I, I have things to say about this episode and opinions and things I just want to get off my chest. But generally, this is not a Bachelor podcast because generally I don't really know what I bring to the table that like every other Bachelor podcast doesn't. So those are my little disclaimers. Um, yeah. Oh, what else? I can't think of anything else, but if there are any other disclaimers, I'll think of them halfway through and stop myself. I did take notes on the two-part finale. Um, my biggest, n not my biggest note, but my first note, which I don't actually think I wrote down, is that this didn't need to be two, <laughs> two days. Um, yeah, like, do I think that there were some things that maybe, like, I, I think, I get why they everything they showed us was left in, but I do kind of wish that, and hindsight is twenty twenty, you know, but I do kind of wish they had, had cut some stuff out from earlier in the season and then some of the like <sighs> final three women stuff of like him like being like I was in love with you I slept with like I wish some of that had been for fantasy sweet week and we didn't have to do two nights in a row two hours each it felt like a lot to me personally um and there were some some segments in there that I felt like were pointless um that's my first take. I think sometimes The Bachelor loves to like drag things out because more then they think more people will watch. So they leave things on cliffhangers. Um, but I think honestly what kills ratings more is like if you're watching the season and it's like the third episode where we're dealing with like Shanae stuff and you're like, I like that's what gets really exhausting. And that's what I think 
is more likely to kill viewership than like if you didn't have a two night finale that dragged out for suspense. But maybe that's just me. And what do I know about television production? Nothing. I'm just talking about my opinion as a viewer. Um, that's another thing. Everything I say is just my opinion as who I am. Now I'm, I'm just living my life. Okay. These are my opinions. Not that anybody's ever gotten mad at me again. I'm like, I have like 40 subscribers on YouTube. Um, Ooh, speaking of that, make sure to like and subscribe. Um, turn on your notifications. I post every Thursday, but just in case I suddenly start posting more or I change my date, that way you know what time. Typically, it's Thursday at 2 p.m. I try to keep it very consistent because I like stability. Um, but just turn it on anyway, and please like and subscribe um, to stay in the loop and follow me on um, wherever you listen to podcasts and all of that too. Thank you. Thank you. So anyways, now that I have all those disclaimers out of the way and my first opinion. So let me see. I'm pulling up my notes. Sorry. Okay. So the first thing I wrote is that <laughs> um, Jesse Palmer, I believe he said he was like right before introing the first thing, he was like, Clayton is on the brink of despair. And I was like, okay, that's kind of dramatic. Um, I know, I know, like, dramatic, whatever. But they're like, Clayton's on the brink of despair. I'm like, okay, bring in the cast psychiatrist. We all know you have one. Um, he says, I'm so broken. Like, okay, dude, I don't, look, I try to have grace for um, the leads and for anybody in this environment because I know that they can, like, mess with your head and you end up acting out of character or everything's heightened. Like, I get that, I do. I just, I, there are some things I don't get and it's hard because then sometimes I feel like I'm being susceptible and I'm like falling into their traps of like hating Clayton when like it's probably a lot more nuanced than that. Um, but I don't know. I'll, I'll get into my opinions later. If, if he genuinely does feel broken, um, I genuinely, sincerely hope he was able to talk to somebody, (laughs) um, during the filming. And I hope really genuinely that him and, spoiler alert, Susie, who he ended up with um, in a very complicated way, which I'll get to, I do hope that they go to couples counseling. Um, Not because I think that they're like fundamentally like a dysfunctional couple, just because I think the couples therapy is really like good. And I think when you come from such, I think most couples who come off The Bachelor should go to couples therapy because it's a very bizarre like environment to be in as a couple. Um, But especially when there was, like, miscommunication, trust issues, all of that, which led to them breaking up in the first place, um, I do definitely think that they should be in couples therapy. Um, So, mini little recap for some for you people who do not know what the bachelor is but you just wanted to watch this anyway so clayton in the last episode he like had two fantasy suites fantasy suites are the first overnight dates like they're the first time that you get off camera so they're kind of known as the sex dates do you have to have sex on fantasy suites no do a lot of leads have sex at least with one person yes um it really i don't care who's having sex with who in fantasy suites. That's between you, your doctor, or you, your partner. Like, as long as you're being safe, I don't care. I genuinely don't care. Um, Now, this is not saying Emmy, if Emmy was a contestant on The Bachelor, wouldn't care, but I'm not a contestant. These people and their sex lives have nothing to do with me personally, so I don't care. Um, But a lot of the times that can cause tension. They left Susie for last. Susie was the one who Clayton apparently liked the most. Unbeknownst, I don't know if I used that word correctly, but completely shocking to me who did not see that connection at all. Um, Like genuinely, if you've been watching the season and you thought that he and Susie had the strongest connection, can you please comment down below why? Because I don't see it. I still don't see it. Like the whole season's played out. They're together. I don't get it I don't get it I didn't see it um I think that's something that I take big issue with a lot of the times with The Bachelor where it's like look I know that like the couples are most likely not going to last and I know that the show itself is its function is entertainment it's not like finding love 
But if you're trying to sell a love story to me, why, what's with selling the love story that at the end isn't the one that works out? Like, were the editors, maybe when they were editing the story, like, did they, when did Susie and Clayton get back together? Did they think, and by they, I mean the producers, did they think that he was going to go back after Rachel because the editing just made it seem like it was him and Rachel at the end? And I know I'm not the only one who felt that way, but I was genuinely, like, I knew it wasn't going to be Gabby. (sighs) Sometimes I find myself talking and then I'm like, remember that my grandmother said I talked too fast. Um, I'm really sorry about that. But anyways, I just like, I don't get it. I don't understand the editors of this show sometimes. Anyways, so <sighs> Susie sent herself home because she didn't want to be with somebody who had sex with or was in love with other women. Okay, valid, valid. Um, he was a dick about it. Like, realistically, whether you think Susie was right to, like, set that boundary, can we all agree that Clayton reacted poorly? And yes, it was an edited fight. Do we know everything that was said? No. Do I care? No. Um, (laughs) anyways, so, like, all of that happened, and so she sent herself home. He was, like, that's why he was broken, and he was on the brink of despair, was because Susie left. So, he decides, he goes, he talks to, he's in a church, the finale opens with him in a church and there's a choir singing. And it's like, we're reminded that he's a man of God, right? Um, <laughs> you know, very godly of him, all of his actions on this season. So he talks to Jesse Palmer, who looks like his, um, like it looks like he's looking at himself in a funhouse mirror. Like they look the same yet different. Like Jesse Palmer was a horrible choice if they were going to start this season with a guy who looks just like Jesse Palmer. Um, The amount of times I thought Jesse Palmer was Clayton, like too many to count. So he talks to Jesse Palmer. Jesse Palmer, like peace and love, not the best host. Like I just, I feel like he doesn't give anything. He just repeats what Clayton says. Clayton's like, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, blah, 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 blah. Like he just says it, but like trying to be a bit more dramatic. So he's basically like, I think I need to tell them. And he's like, okay, so you're going to tell them all. <laughs> you're going to tell them that you were, that Susie went home because, and you loved her and you loved both of them and you were intimate with both of them. You're going to tell them. And he's like, yeah. So he does. And this is what they dubbed the rose ceremony from hell. And I think that was a pretty accurate description. Now, I take a few issues with this rose ceremony from hell. I am not saying that I think he shouldn't have told them about what happened with Susie. I think he should have. And I think his, like, goal of being transparent was noble and important. Now, there were a few issues with it. Um, One was his method of delivering. And two was that he wasn't fully transparent. So, naturally, Clayton decides, because he needs to be open to these women, to tell them that he slept with both of them and that he was in love with the woman who went home in front of both of them. Now, rose ceremonies are already very stressful. You don't know if you're getting a rose, if you're going home, like, especially if you're in the final three, like at this point, you're invested. You've spent 12 hours off camera. You've maybe done physical stuff. Like there are layers. You are attached in some capacity. So you go into the final, like three rose ceremony, probably stressed out of your mind. Then Susie doesn't even show up. And you're like, there's two of us. Like what the hell's happening? And then he's like, Susie went home. Also, I slept with both of you. Now, I would want to know if somebody who I am potentially about to get engaged to has just slept with somebody else. I would want to know whether or not it was a deal breaker. I would want to know. But, and here's where the big but lies. (laughs) Um, I would simply be humiliated, humiliated, if the guy that I was falling in love with or in love with told me that... He had had sex with another woman right in front of the other woman. Like, not because, and they're friends. Like, it's not because I hate her or anything or, like, she, they hate each other and it's like, oh, you slept with her. But it's like, you're revealing something personal about my sex life, my saying I am Gabby or Rachel, right? Like, you're revealing something personal about their sex lives to somebody else. Like, he already revealed it when he was talking to Susie. He was like, I had sex with both of them. So that's out there already. They both did not make that decision to have that personal information about their sex lives public. But they don't know that at this point, and 
they're finding out for the first time that he is in love with three of them and that he slept with with both of them in front of the other person. Like, that is humiliating. He should have pulled them each aside before the rose ceremony and explained it to each of them individually. I think, ideally, it would have been a few hours before the rose ceremony let them each know. And then when they get to the remote ceremony, they could have processed it and they can decide if they actually want to move forward because he kind of puts them on the spot. He's like, I slept with both of you. And then he says, you don't have to say yes to me. Like they know that. Like they, they have the agency this entire season if they want to walk away at some point. Susie basically did. She was like, I wouldn't feel comfortable. Like you know that they have the agency to do that. It was just, it was all very weird because like, I think that's an important thing to talk about. And I think that's definitely something you you should talk about before you potentially propose to somebody. But doing it like in that method was just bad in my opinion, because you're in front of somebody else. Like that's not a private conversation you're having with this person that your heart's involved with. And like, it's a rose ceremony. Like there's some kind of like expectation that somebody's going to give out roses at some point. So it's just like, in my opinion, it was a horrible way to do it. I would be absolutely humiliated and it gets worse later. So naturally like the women are like, what the hell? Um, they're really upset. Gabby is like a queen in like standing up to Clayton. Eventually after they, like they both talked, uh, oh, I, I wrote, I wrote in my notes, um, that when Gabby spoke to him and the way he tried to explain like his like a p- feeling to Gabby where she was like you love all three of us like what like what's up with that um I'm doing a horrible job summarizing again please I'm not here to summarize but anyways basically he was like whoever I end up with is who like I love the most and she's like that's the wrong answer And she was so right for that. But the way he was explaining it to her and then the way he explained it to Gabby and defended himself, um, the way, scratch that, the way he defended himself to Rachel like felt completely different to me where I was watching it and I was like, okay, he clearly likes Rachel more, which I've known this entire time. I do think you can even see in the way that their breakups went that the relationship he had with Gabby was different than the one he had with Rachel. And I do genuinely believe if Susie hadn't sent herself home, Gabby would have gone home at that final three-row ceremony. I don't think he loved Gabby to the same capacity if he even loved her at all. Um, and that's saying absolutely nothing negative about Gabby because she was my favorite from the season. But I just, I don't think you could tell the way he was like, well, I, I care about you each differently, but whoever I end up with, I love the most. Like he was never, like the way he spoke to Rachel, it felt like he was trying to convince her to stay more. Like, I don't know. It, to me, it didn't seem like he was trying to convince Gabby to stay at first. Then she turned him down. And at the rose ceremony, he called Rachel up first. Um, so naturally Gabby's probably thinking, oh, he loves her more because he said, that he views love as this quantifiable thing, that one of us is the one he loves the most. Um, So she's probably thinking he loves Rachel more. Um, And she says no. And then when he calls Gabby up, she says, no, I can't. And she's like, do you want to walk me out? And she walks, he walks her out. He convinces her to stay. She's very upset. Something else I want to talk about is that this whole conversation about, um, like quantifying love and like the woman he loves the most. Um, For those of you who haven't been watching this season or don't know much about Gabby's history, she talked about her relationship with her mother and how her mother kind of withheld love. And she kind of like felt like if her mom does that, like what, you know, like I feel like she, she probably, that is probably especially hard for her because she's fought so hard for love to just, not be this con- like you know like she's already had to like beg for love from people who she shouldn't have had to beg for love from I feel like I'm butchering her story I don't want to like anyways I just feel like Gabby maybe specifically because of what she's been through like that would have that would be especially hard to get to the end and then be like I love you but I love somebody else more it's like this feeling of like why somebody better than me like why? she said too later either during this episode or in the after the final rose she said like I 
I, it was during after the final row. She was like, I want like our connection to be the best, but I don't want to like have to compete to be the best of the three women. Like I don't like it. And it made, I'm not making sense, but she did. She's very beautiful and intelligent. Anyway, so Gabby says no. He convinces her to stay. Boo, throwing tomatoes at him, <laughs> not, not Gabby or, or Rachel. So like they go through that and then they meet his parents. The meeting of the parents, honestly, I don't have much to say about either because, like, it went well for both of them. Like, it wasn't the typical meeting of the family that happens in The Bachelor where, like, the parents are like, I like this one best. And you can tell it's clearly not the one that the lead wanted. Like, there was none of that tension because at the end of the episode, the tension was, like... I still like Susie. And that's where yesterday's episode ended. Let me see if I have anything else to say. Oh, he said he wanted to go back to um, Susie. And I was like, honestly, I feel like it's because he has two backups. Like, and I also like, I don't know, maybe it's the editing, but I just, I don't get, I don't see the connection he has with Susie. I don't see it. Like, does anybody see it? Because I can't see it. You know that episode of Friends when she gets an ultrasound, Rachel gets an ultrasound, and, like, they show her the baby, and, and she's like, oh, I see it, and then the doctor leaves, and she cries, and she goes, I can't see it. That's how I feel about their relationship. I don't see it. I don't see the connection. I don't see it. I don't see it. Please let me know if you see it, because I don't. Anyways, um, that's where part one ended, and I was like, okay, they spent an hour on the rose ceremony and then like the meeting of the family was ultimately like not pointless, but it felt like annoying because I'm like, it ends with him still wanting Susie. And uh, that I have to say, like I, there have been bachelors, they change their mind, they go back to the other one. I genuinely, and like Rachel like said yes when he asked for the rose. I don't understand why in the hell he begged Gabby to stay. She said no. She was about to walk out just to then, like, two days later break up with her. And I'll get to that. So that's the end of the first episode, and then a whole day went by. And then we start again Tuesday night. Um, and Jesse Palmer, <laughs> the new host, <laughs> weird guy. Um, no hate to Jesse Palmer. I just, like, he's, like, like, I feel nothing towards him. So, um, which I guess is better than the hate I felt towards Chris Harrison. So, but anyways, I do feel like Chris Harrison knew how to host better, but maybe that'll develop with time. So best of luck to Jesse Palmer. But, um, so the second episode starts and Jesse Palmer knocks on Susie's door and he's like, Clayton regrets how things went. You should meet with him. Meanwhile, Gabby, <laughs> Gabby and Rachel... Abby and Rachel have no idea that any of this is happening. Like, hello? So anyways, um, Susie's like, okay. And um, she agrees to meet with him. And then it cuts to her walking into a room where I presume she thought it was just going to be Clayton. And his parents are there. It's Clayton and his parents. It's a meeting of the parents that they do, like, with the final two. Clayton and Susie hadn't even, like, she had just, they weren't, like, I can't even form words because it makes no sense to me. Um, naturally, she, like, introduces herself to her parents, to, to his parents, and then she's like, can we talk outside? And I was like, yeah, because I, again, I would be like, what the hell? Does Clayton not understand what, like, privacy is? Like, I know you're on a television show, but you can't have, like, one-on-one -on -one conversations. Like, what, what's up with that? So... He basically, he professes his love for Susie. He's like, I don't want to lose you. I don't want to lose you, et cetera, et cetera. And she's like, I have to think about it. So they kind of leave. Like, she doesn't say yes to him. It kind of ends on a weird no. And she gets into a car and leaves. And honestly, I was like, okay, so is that a yes or a no? Like, it wasn't definitive. It didn't seem like, okay, Susie is giving him another chance. And yet, we cut to him <laughs> in his ITMs, which stand for in the moments, and they're like the little interviews you give um, behind the camera, like one-on-one -on -one to the camera. He's like, I have decided that it's Susie, and so naturally I need to break up with Rachel and Gabby. And I was like, what? 
I, like, we came to that decision. I mean, he'd been saying that he loved Susie the most for, like, two episodes. So, like, you'd think I wouldn't be so surprised. But, like, Susie didn't seem that, like, all in. So I was like, why would, I don't know. I think it's because I was so much, like, I really interpreted him, like, going after Susie as, like, well, he has two other backups, so he'll be fine. So when Susie didn't say yes immediately, I thought he was going to give it another chance with Gabby and Rachel, especially Rachel, because I thought that him and Rachel, it was so strong. Like, it felt so strong to me. I was like, he's going to go to Rachel, and then him and Rachel will end up, and it'll be good. That's what I thought it was going to be. Um, not that the ending was, like, out of this world shocking. I don't think it was in the end, like, hindsight, whatever. But when you're watching it, it, like, there's a lot of back and forth, and you do kind of, like, it's like whiplash. It's like Rachel, Gabby, Susie, like, all out of nowhere. You're like, oh, my God. Um, I was waiting for him to be like, Jesse Palmer, I'm in love with you. <laughs> um, anyways, so, like, it was, like, overwhelming, because you're like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> just pick one person. <laughs> Which I guess he did the whole time, but he couldn't just pick her. I don't know. Now, obviously, if Susie hadn't gone last in Fantasy Suites and she hadn't been like, I can't move forward and they hadn't had a whole blow-up fight, things would have probably been different. If she was first and she had set that boundary and he probably didn't sleep with anybody else, it would have been a clean, nice ending. But naturally, the producer said her made her Fantasy Suite last to create utter chaos. So, like, that's what I'm talking about in the, like, Clayton, I don't understand his decisions and his choices in a lot of instances, but I also think, like, considering the situation he's in and considering the way things have been orchestrated to sabotage him and Susie and, like, then send him into, like, this pit of despair that <laughs> um, Jesse Palmer said he was in at the beginning of the finale, like, it's hard because I don't think that th that justifies, like, the way Clayton behaved and some of the choices he made. But it's also, like, none of this would have gone as crazy if, like, the producers hadn't sabotaged him in the first place. Um, so it's just, it's hard. It's really hard. And again, I try to give leeway to the, to the leads. I do think, for me, like, Fantasy Suites feels like the one time where, like, producer, producer manipulation, like, doesn't feel beyond the, like, the order of it, like, the actual decision to, like, whatever you do behind closed doors, like, that really feels like that is 1,000%, like, up to you. Now, obviously, he says he did it unknowing that that was a boundary of Susie's, whatever, I'm not rehashing that, but, um, it's just, it's hard, you know, because it's, like, in a different world, if they had just had Susie go first, and he had been, like, I want Susie to go first, and that was it, we'd be in a completely different circumstance. Now, do I think that would have been better? Probably not, because at least now, if him and Susie, like, last thing, they've been through enough. So, um, anyways, what, what, where was I? I don't remember what I was talking about. Oh, he goes to, um, right, he decides it's Susie, I think, is where I left off. He goes, and this is one of the examples of the things I'm talking about, where I say I don't really understand his decisions. So, um, sorry that I'm playing with my hair so much. Um, I'm like energized, you know? So anyways, he goes to break up with Gabby and Rachel and I'm like, okay, <laughs> what? Um, we're doing that now? Um, like last night at the rose ceremony, you didn't like, you didn't want them to leave. Like that's what, it didn't make sense to me. I guess it took them meeting his family for him to be like, this isn't the woman I want to be meeting my family. But it just, it was, it was like baffling because I was like, I don't believe you. Like I genuinely, he said that and he was like, I'm gonna break up with him. And I didn't believe that that was the end. Like I didn't think he was gonna break up with him. I genuinely didn't. I thought that he was gonna go and he was gonna change his mind because like, I didn't trust him. Like, I didn't believe it. I was like, okay, yeah, you'll, you're, you're going to break up with them, Clayton. Sure, we'll see. So, but we did. And um, so he walks in to a room that they are apparently sharing. I mean, I, I don't think that they were necessarily in the same hotel room the entire time. I think they, the producers, like, were like, do your makeup and we're going to set up a girl chat, which is, like, the orchestrated, like, talking to each other. Um, because they were both dressed up, like, nicely, and they were talking on camera, and, like, the stuff you said, like, they said, you can tell that they hadn't seen each other since the rose ceremony, because they were like, did you meet the, his family? Like, have you been on a date? Like, they were trying to, like, evaluate where 
they were in the process. Like they were like, have you had a final, like the final two like dates? Like, is that happening? Like they were, you know what I mean? They were trying to evaluate where they were. And if they had been staying together the whole time, they would have had these conversations off camera. Um, so I think they, they set them together. Um, but, and again, maybe that's like, okay, it was the producers put them in the same room, but Clayton walks in and he starts talking to them as a group and he breaks up with them as a group. And he's basically like, I want to pursue Susie to them together. Both women are sitting there together. It's like baffling to me, like genuinely baffling. You humiliated them like two nights ago by being like, I slept with her right in front of the other girl. Now, instead of like sitting with one of the, like each of them down individually and being like, look, I care about you. Our relationship is unique, but I feel something stronger with somebody else and I don't want to lead you on anymore. He breaks up with them and they're both in the same room. Like, it's just baffling to me. And like, the thing is, yes, like he walks in and there are, are both of them, but he could be like, hey, Rachel, can I talk to you? And then Gabby would be like, what's happening? And that would still be dramatic. But he sits down and he just addresses them as a group. It's like, you just did that. That's what I'm talking about where it's like, some things are orchestrated, but then like, you don't have to completely follow what they say. Like they orchestrate a situation, but in some circumstances, like there are some circumstances that are completely out of his control. He had no, like Susie went last in the fantasy suites. Okay, he didn't have to yell at her the way he did, you know? Like, that's what I'm talking about, where it's like, there's a gray area in all of this. But um, he addresses them once again as a group. Gabby walks out. She's like, okay, bye, Clayton. <laughs> um, he chases after her. They have a really, like, good conversation. And by they have a really good conversation, I mean, Gabby slays. Um, yeah, she just, she slays. Let me see. I haven't even been looking at my notes. Oh, okay, yes, this is something that was, like, iconic. She was like, I don't believe anything you're saying. Like, your your actions speak louder than your words. Like, I, I can't trust you. And she was really right. And she was basically like, it's been two days. Like, two days ago, we we went through this whole thing. And I, I let you convince me. I stayed. I met your family. And now two days later, it's Susie. Like, it's been Susie this whole time. And, and he's like, I just didn't know. And she's like, no, it's been Susie this whole time. But when it was my decision to leave, you weren't okay with that. But now that it's your decision, you want me to leave. And it was like, she was so right. Like she said no. And he begged her to come back. Like for what reason? For what reason? He should have just right in that moment been like, I want Susie back. I just, or let Gabby go. Like just let Gabby go. I don't know. It's this thing that happens, I guess, with where I, I saw it with Susie and Clayton too, where it's like she left. I guess she didn't leave Iceland yet, but like that's not up to her. That's up to production. But like she walked away and then he came back and then she was like, I don't know. And then he came back again. And it's like, I don't know. They said that they reunited. He's like, she reached out to me. I don't know if that's true. If that's true, well, then that was up to her. She reached out to him. Now, if he reached out to her again and she just doesn't want to say that it was him, like, continuing to push because of Cassie in the last episode, which I guess I'll touch on really quickly. Now, I'm sorry. I'm rambling all over the place. But Cassie um, was from Colton's season of The Bachelor. And she, if you know Colton's season, he jumped a fence. He jumped the fence after she sent herself home. And eventually he chased after her and was like, let's give it another chance. And they did. And yesterday they had some Bachelor alum talking in between the showing of the actual episode. And I hate those segments, but I did think it was interesting that they had Cassie talk. Um, and she was basically like, I hope that she doesn't feel pressure to say yes if he comes back. Like, I hope that she trusts her gut when she walked away. And so it was very interesting because if you know anything about Colton and Cassie, it was very, very horrible like after breakup. He stalked her. It was a whole thing. Um, I don't want to talk about it. I'm a Colton auntie, okay? I don't care that he's gay. Being gay doesn't excuse you being a criminal. Um, plenty of people deal with, I just said I didn't want to talk about it, but I do want to say this. Plenty of people deal with um, the really like, hard struggle it can be to grapple with your sexuality that doesn't excuse any bad behaviors that come during that 
challenges. I've held, I've dealt with things in my life, sexuality, mental illness, and there have been moments where I've been bad to people, not to that level of committing an actual crime. Um, but regardless of what I was going through in those moments or what Colton was going through, it doesn't excuse the actual behavior and the harm caused. Um, and I don't think that that should be forgotten. I don't think that he should be glorified just because he's gay. Plenty of people are gay. Um, that's my take on Colton. But anyways, I think it was interesting that they had Cassie talk and basically be like, I hope she doesn't feel pressured. And that's why I'm thinking like, if he reached out to her, it would be a really bad look, especially after Cassie. So that's why I feel like they're saying that it was Susie reaching out to Clayton. Hopefully it was Susie reaching out to Clayton. Um, not that I think that she should be with him, but I, I really think that... Clayton needs to learn boundaries and if he reached out to her again like he needed to just like let her breathe and let her go so I hope he did um but anyways what was I saying then yeah okay he goes he says to Gabby can I walk you out Gabby says no she walks herself out and she slates then we cut to her in present day I say as if this is fictional TV. They they pan to her, like, they go to the live audience and they interview her and she kills it as per usual. Um, I have very little to say because she was just, like, so well-spoken and so intelligent and I literally cannot do her justice. I am in love with Gabby Windy. Um, I, I love love her. She was, she was so right for everything she said. She defended herself. Um, it was great. It was really great. I was like, Gabby for next Bachelorette. Then they brought Clayton out. He was basically like, I didn't listen enough. I didn't ask enough questions, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I say blah, 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 because he literally said the same things to Rachel later. Like, I should have asked more questions. I should have heard things out more. Something that Gabby said where um, during her, I don't remember, the after the final rose, um, was that... Oh, because Jesse Palmer asked Clayton, like, do you regret telling Gabby that you, like, had sex with and were in love with other women? Or maybe he asked that for Rachel. Maybe he asked for both. But I do know at some point Gabby said something like, we are each individuals. Like, me, Rachel, and Susie are all individuals, and you just assumed that I would want to know things that maybe, like, I have different needs than Susie. Like, I, I didn't need to know certain things, but there were other things that I wish I would have known and this is I forgot to mention this but she talked about how his transparency or maybe I did talk about it and I forgot that I talked about it but that the thing that she would have wanted to know the most is something he didn't even say so his transparency like basically didn't mean anything because he was like I want to be transparent but then the thing that she was like you saw when you talked about like the woman you end up with is the woman that you, you love the most you saw me physically like react to that and be upset by that and you didn't tell me at any point, I had to find out watching it back, that you had told Susie that you loved her the most. And that this whole time, you loved Susie the most. Like, you, like that would have upset me way more than hearing that you had had sex with somebody else or whatever. So it, it, it was like, she was, she was so right to be like, we are each individuals. And what Susie had problems with, I wouldn't have had problems with. But you didn't consider what I would have, pro like, you weren't fully transparent. And that's something that people have been saying a lot and something that I wanted to touch on and I forgot about. Um, but he wanted so badly to be transparent and to like tell the whole truth. And he just, he left out that fact. He, he left out the fact that he told Susie that he loved her the most and that he knew that Susie was the one he wanted to be with. And that's what Gabby had an issue with. Um, and what a lot of people had an issue with. Anyway, she slayed, she was a queen. And then we cut to his breakup with Rachel. Now, when I was watching his breakup with Rachel, I was like, it's not over. Like, his break, his breakup with Gabby, she was just, it felt more angry. The, the breakup with Rachel, and me and my sister talked about this too, felt very Lauren and Ari-esque. Um, she was, Rachel was like, you'll regret this, like, this will haunt you. And if you watch Ari breaking up with Lauren, um, she was like, you're gonna regret this, like, this was a mistake, like, it was us. And it was, like, he did go back to her and they're still together and they have really cute kids. <laughs> um, 
They had Gemini twins, and I was so happy because I love twins, and I love Geminis, and I love when those things are together. Anyways, like, it was a mistake. Like, she was devastated. He was devastated. Now, I think the difference with Ari and Lauren is that it was never this thing where he was saying the whole time, like, Becca is the one I love the most. Becca is the one for me. Like, it was nothing like that. So watching it back, it's not like Lauren was like, well, you liked her better the whole time or anything. Like, it, it wasn't like that. Um... I, I do think that's like the key issue. I do think Rachel was genuinely heartbroken. It was it was a really, really like sad breakup to watch because she clearly believed that it was her and him at the end the whole time. And I did too. Like I did too. I genuinely saw it. Um, his like reaction to Susie, I thought was more, like when I was watching it last week and even yesterday, I thought it was more like Susie's the one that got away. Like he wants Susie because she's not there. I didn't genuinely understand because I still don't where is it where is their connection I didn't understand the same way I could feel the one with Rachel like it felt like it was Rachel at the end the whole time to me so I don't know it was, it was very um sad to watch her in that much pain and she was like I fought for this like you haven't fought for me and she was clearly like up until the end she's like I can't believe you're putting me in a car like it was it was really really sad to watch and then they cut to her in the after the final rose and she was still crying she was still crying and I was like maybe it's not over between them still I was still like it's not over between them but then in her interview she talked about she's like I there are no like there are no feelings left like these tears aren't because I I have feelings for him still it's just like having it's like an out of body experience like watching yourself be blindsided on tv and like it's been really hard and she was like I I don't have any feelings for him because watching it back like I like I don't think he ever loved me like she she was very much like I there are no lingering feelings and I was like okay cool so they are not together um that theory out the window and I think again like the biggest issue is that it's not like Lori and Arin <laughs> Ari and Lauren um Lo Lauren and Ari, it's not like um, he had said to Becca, like, that Becca sent herself home and he was like, I love you the most. And then he, you know, it was very much like he was torn between them and he was genuinely sad when Lauren left and she was genuinely sad. It was very different. Clayton showed no emotion when he sent Rachel home, which was, like, devastating because she was crying. And, like, watching it back, you see... Um, I don't know, like, you, like I, I get it. If I was watching it back and I was Rachel too, I would be like, this man doesn't deserve me for all that I've, like, opened my heart to him um, and, and fully trusted him. Like, I don't know. So I don't blame her. Um, yeah, I, I, I could imagine her, like, being like, I'm not going back to him after watching that. Um, something else, what did I... I don't know what I said. I don't, I'm sorry. Let me see. Um, oh, no, I forgot. I lost my train of thought. Let me see. Let me see. Let me, let me remember. Oh, there was a jaw dropping moment where, um, she was like, <laughs> Rachel says to Clayton, she's like, did you just tell me that you were in love with me so you could sleep with me? And I gasped. I was gacked. I was Gooped and gagged. I was like, pop off queen. Because in the fantasy suite episode, like Clayton hadn't told anybody he was falling in love with them. Or maybe he had told one person. But, and maybe it was either Rachel or Susie. I don't know. Maybe he had said that, but he hadn't like given much indication at that point. Right before each like fantasy suite date, he told Rachel, I'm falling in love with you. And then he handed them the card and then they went on to have sex. And then he did the same thing with Gabby. He hadn't said anything and then he goes, I'm falling in love with you. At the dinner portion of the overnight date, right before they go into the suite where they either do or do not have sexual intercourse. Um, so like watching it back, like I can imagine, like he's like, I love you the most. Like he was so into Susie and he still like, is like, I love you right before like you were gonna be alone and possibly have the decision whether or not to have sex. Like, I, I understand. And I was like, thank you for asking that question. Something else that really bothered me about Clayton, which again, there are certain things that I feel like are producers and certain things that I just feel like are the mistakes of the lead is he repeated himself 
all the time. To the women, he'd say something heartfelt seemingly, and then he'd say the same thing to the next woman. It's like, what do you mean? Who do you actually love? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Something that's really been bothering me is I feel like he just repeated himself. He even did it. When he said like everything to Ray, to Gabby, he was like, I should have listened more. I like, I learned a lot. This, that's something I've learned that I don't ask enough questions. I don't listen, blah, 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 blah. He said the same thing to Rachel. Like, I don't know, like, I, like, corny, we've seen it, we've seen it, we, we've been here. So, naturally, that happens, we see Rachel, she's great, pop off, queen, and then it cuts back to Iceland, which, side note, I was watching the finale with my parents, and it was so funny, because my father, every two seconds, was like, oh my god, I've been there, I've seen that. Um, halfway through the episode, he pulled up his little photo album, and he started showing me, he was like, look, me at the cathedral. <laughs> Um, although Pablo does not recommend Iceland, um, he said that it was too cold and he, and like the sun didn't come up very much. He also didn't get to see the Northern Lights, which was one of the main reasons he went. Um, but anyways, yeah. Although it looked kind of pretty. Like, I feel like I have no issues with the cold. I lived in Ohio for four years, so I, I don't know. My parents are from South America. They don't like the cold. Um, anyways, so we go back to Iceland and now both, every woman except Susie is gone. So he's like, and Susie, remember, she left off kind of with a question mark, right? So then we see him getting ready for like a final rose ceremony, which is when they propose. Typically, it's two people are left at the end. One person comes first, and that's when you find out that person's being rejected. Um, so it's just Susie. She comes. She looks beautiful. She did look... I love the dress on her. Her hair, 10 out of 10. And um, he gives his whole little spiel. And she's like, no. She's like, I can't. I'm leaving Iceland alone today. So she rejects his proposal. First time in Bachelor... Um, history that's ever happened. Congratulations to Susie Evan for breaking the glass. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. But I feel like I would have liked that more if she hadn't allegedly reached back out to him. Um, like, I, I don't know. It feels like I'm like, okay, she rejected his proposal and then they're still together. Um, anyways, so like, that's, we see him single and that's where it ends and then it's it's 9 30 p.m right cut to um jesse palmer i keep forgetting his name and he's there and he's like well that's the end of clayton's journey and there's a long pause and then he does this really stupid look into the camera where he turns when it <laughs> turns like to the side and raises an eyebrow and he's like i can't raise one eyebrow he's like or is it <laughs> and he does it it's like the cringiest thing i've ever seen like it's like 9 30 like we all know it's not over we haven't even spoken to Susie yet like whatever so then like commercials come back he's like blah 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 blah, blah. <laughs> like at this point i'm like bored i'm like tomato 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 um that tiktok sound where it's like corny i'm throwing tomatoes me um, cause it's just Clayton talking and he's like, it's been very hard. I grew five years and two months, blah, 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 blah. I don't know if that's true. I hope genuinely he goes to therapy and like watches it back and like, like I get that it's TV and a lot of it is manufactured, but I feel like even if I went on The Bachelor and I went home early, I would, I would watch it back and I'd be like, what could I have done? I mean, I think back to like situations in my life and years of my life. Um, like my freshman year of college was like the worst year of my life. I think about that year a lot. And I think about things that were unfair that happened to me and that I wished that, like, that I feel like I didn't have control over. And then there were some things where I'm like, I feel like I I could have changed some things. I would approach things differently. Even when I was at my most vulnerable, like, there were a lot of negative circumstances out of my control. Like, there are things I wish I could have done differently. Um, and that's that's just the truth. Like, that doesn't mean that the circumstances that caused me to react a certain way like weren't bad or that like the way other people were treating me like doesn't come into the equation like 
all of that plays a role, but that doesn't mean that you can look back at moments of deep distress and still be like, well, there, I still could have handled myself better, you know? Does that make any sense? I don't know if I'm making any sense, but like even in moments where like the circumstances are really chaotic or really traumatic or very like overwhelming, even if you react in a really like justified way, um, or even if you're like proud of how you acted 90% of the time, but there's 10% you would be different. I just feel like I like to approach life as like, well, there are little things I could have done better along the way anyway. So I do hope he watches it back and learns genuinely. But at this point, I'm like tuned out. I'm like, I don't care. Um, and then he's like, Clayton talks more. And then he's like, somebody did reach out to me. Somebody I never thought I would hear back from. And um, I'm thinking it's somebody who's not even in the top three. Someone we can't even fathom. And then Susie comes out and it's like corny and throwing tomatoes. <laughs> um, basically, they took time apart. They got back together. Like she's like, he's my boyfriend now. And then she's like, I love him. And I still don't see it. I don't see the chemistry. I don't see the love. I don't see anything. Um, yeah, I, I still don't see it. Now that's not me saying I don't want them to, I, like I don't, it's their business. If they're happy, genuinely like, I wish them nothing with the best. I just, as somebody who gets invested in as cynical as I, as I am when it comes to this show, I am still romantic at heart and I do get invested in the love stories and I was simply not invested in this one. Like I didn't care. I didn't think that they were going to end up together and Susie gave me aiming for Bachelorette the whole time vibes. And like, look, I'm not against somebody aiming for Bachelorette, but I would like it to feel less obvious. She just felt like, and the rejecting the proposal too. It was like, I don't know. Like I do genuinely hope that they're like happy together because I, I do not wish ill will on anybody. I think it's bad karma, but I just genuinely don't see it and I don't get it. And I don't, I don't know. Like I'm still confused. Maybe I'll see interviews of them and I'll get it. Um, but even like, I don't know, other times where people have gone back and have thought that they were incompatible or whatever, like Peter, when he went back to Madison Pruitt, I'm like, they are incompatible. They are not going to work. But I at least saw, I saw it. I don't see it. I don't get it. Like, they're both attractive if they both want kids and a family. And I wish them nothing but the best. Um, if they watch this, I was going to say, say that you should name their daughter Emiliana, but don't. Um... Gabby Wendy, if you have a daughter and you name her Emiliana, I'm all <laughs> for that. <laughs> um, yeah, love you, Gabby. Um, anyways, so that's it. And then right before the commercial, or maybe, yeah, right before the commercial. And at this point, I'm like, okay, so we got a happy ending. I don't even care. Like, I don't even care. I Like, the thing about Clayton is that I didn't like him the entire season. He drove me crazy the entire season. Like, I, like, at this point, everybody was like, oh, it's the craziest finale ever. I am just emotionally exhausted. I'm like, all of that, all of that, and then he's happy. Like, I think it would have, like, and they made this whole thing of, like, first time ever, or a bachelor, ended up alone. Somebody turned down his proposal. And then it's like, well, he, like, they're together anyway. Like, it doesn't feel that dramatic. Like, it was dramatic, but in the sense that it was like a roller coaster. It was like this, and then this, and then this, and then this. It would have been just better narratively for me if he ended up alone. Like, the fact that they got back together makes the initial, like, him, like, her saying no to him feel not that interesting. You know? Just me? Okay. Um... But I don't know, maybe it's because I'm an English major and I like narrative and I like structure. And it's like, if I was writing this and it was a story, I'd be like, okay, but what? I don't get it. Like, I don't get it. Um, or if I was reading it and it was a fictional book or I was watching it and it was TV, I'd be like, I don't get it. And Jesse Palmer's like, you're going to find out who the next Bachelorette is and it's not Gabby or Rachel. And I was like, screw you, Jesse Palmer, because I, I wanted it to be Gabby. And so then... Uh, my dad's like, it's going to be both. It's going to be both. And I was like, oh, Pablo, please stop. Don't get my hopes up. I need to just accept reality. And then Jesse Palmer, it's like, it's both of them. Yay. Oh, they did. Oh, right before the Bachelorette announcement, um, Jesse Palmer's like, are you guys going to get engaged? Blah, 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 you know. And Clayton's like, Susie's like, if if it happens, I'm going to ask him. And I liked, I liked that. Very girl boss of her. 
Um, but Clayton's like, I do have something. And then he goes off and I'm like, he's getting the final rose and he gives her the final rose. And I was like, corny, tomato, 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 like whatever. Like it was cute, but like, I knew that was coming and I was like, okay, announce the bachelorette already because who the hell is it going to be if it's not Gabby or Rachel? Um, but then it's both of them. It is both of them. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier because my brain's all over the place. So it's both of them. And I'm like, yay. Um, and Initially, I was like, okay, they're doing two seasons back to back, like they did with Katie and Michelle. Um, because I was like, I really hope it's not two bachelorettes in one season because the only time they did that, um, it was really only two bachelorettes for one night because the men voted and then they kicked one of them off. And I was like, God, I hope that they don't have to compete with each other. Um, and Jesse Palmer's like, for the first time ever, we're gonna have two bachelorettes, two leads for the whole season. And um, I was like, Okay, I kind of love that. Um, I love that, actually. Um, I I haven't watched all of Joy, jo, uh, Joy, Joe Millionaire. I don't know if I'm going to. I got kind of bored. Um, no hate to Joe Millionaire. I'm just watching other TV shows right now. And maybe now that The Bachelor is over, I'll, like, watch it. I do know how it ends. Um, just because there was this one girl who I, like, was obsessed with after the first episode and I was like did she end up with him so I was keeping tabs she didn't but that's okay um she was killing it she was a single mother she was like Dominican I think she was Latina and I was like kill it queen loved her vibe um but anyways like I really liked the um the two leads like they they weren't interested in the same women and um at least I only watched one episode but initially they weren't interested in the same women and it was a lot of like they were just talking like it was it was a cool like they could process with the other person and I kind of hope that it's that way um I also I really like Gabby and Rachel like individually and I really would have been happy with either I was leaning towards Gabby just because um if I were to ever have a hero player um, as in if I were ever to be a contestant on the show, which I do not want to be, I've decided that I don't think I'd, I just, I don't want to be on The Bachelor. Um, but if I, like, if I was, I feel like Gabby would be my inspiration because she, like, leads with humor, but she's also, like, has, like, I just love Gabby. I relate to her a lot. Um, just the way she carries herself and a lot of, like, what she said makes sense and also everybody says that she's the funniest person in the cast and that is what I would want my goal to be like whether or not I end up with the guy I wouldn't care as long as people were like Emmy's the funniest of the women um so I relate to Gabby in that sense um and I just I really like her vibe but um I think it'll be really interesting to have two girls they're very close they both went through the same thing of like Clayton like basically like just being so wishy-washy with them and confusing and like you can even see like in at, in the rose ceremony from hell when Gabby left and then she came back like as soon as she comes back she apologizes to Rachel like they just have a really cute sweet bond and when they brought them both up like Rachel was like I'm just so happy for her and it, it was really cute their families were really excited and like sitting next to each other and they hugged like Rachel's like parents hugged Gabby after and Gabby's grandpa hugged Rachel and it was very cute and I do think that they're different enough that hopefully they'll have different interest in men um I think there'll be plenty of tension with the like oh there are two of them they're here the whole season which girl do I like best at the beginning that I hope towards the end there's like less of like them competing for each like for the men I also feel like if the producers like don't like, the producers kind of screwed Clayton over in a lot of ways. And I think if the producers kind of, like, decide to be a little bit nicer to Rachel and <laughs> Gabby and let them actually, like, communicate and, like, in a really, like, in a way that was very compelling to watch, like, Joe Millionaire, because everybody who watched Joe Millionaire in the comments on Twitter that I saw were like, oh, my God, hopefully it'll be, like, Joe Millionaire. That was really interesting to watch. And, like, the the friendship of the two leads was, like, one of the best parts of that show. Um, so hopefully it's something like that where, like, the women can genuinely, like, bounce off each other and they have different, like, interests in men. They, like, seem very uneasy of, of how to, how they're gonna do it. They were like, we have no idea how we're doing it, but, you know, we're excited. So, um, 
It feels like a lot of things are still up in the air, but I feel like it'll be a really interesting season. I like both of them individually, and I think that Gabby was like, I'm a girl's girl's girl. I'm so excited to, to have somebody else. I think one of my biggest issues with The Bachelorette is that a lot of the times it's just, it's too, there's too much male energy. Um, and so I'm excited to have two women kind of like hopefully girl bossing and like standing up for each other, standing together and staying strong. I really hope there's like less competition between them and more like camaraderie. Um, because I find that a lot more compelling to watch. And we all know the men are going to make fools of themselves. I said in another podcast, I think the last one with my sister, that like the leads always kind of go through it because of the, the contestants. And like, why would I want to watch like men make a woman go through it? I kind of hope that because there's like another woman and they're both going through the same thing that like they can like, you know, there's like camaraderie like I really that's what I want out of it personally as a viewer um see I'm fine with them making male leads look bad because who cares about the feelings of men I'm just kidding kidding like I'm not in the sense that like we as women have suffered enough <laughs> and um which is why like the the female leads when they like go through it I'm like oh my god haven't we suffered enough <laughs> um which, like, Clayton, like, I don't know. There's, like, a weird, like, level for me where I feel like men get more, like, chances to redeem themselves in society. And so, like, I feel like Clayton will be just fine. And especially if him and Susie last and it works out. Like, I feel like for the most part people have forgotten, like, forgiven Ari and stuff like that. Like, people forget and they forgive and, and they move on. And I feel like for women, like, it's sometimes it's harder and, um, I don't know. I just feel like, like, I think Clayton will genuinely be fine. Like right now it's really hard, but I think he'll be fine. Um, like I, I think he'll be fine. And I, I just, I don't know. Women have been through enough. I hate that. Like when they're the lead and they're seemingly supposed to be protective and then like in some way they end up looking bad. So I don't know. I also feel like the, like a lot of the times, like the female leads like end up like looking like girl bosses even if like maybe to me they look like girl bosses but then to like the sexist audience they're bitches but like to me I'm like girl boss so um I'm excited I am intrigued on how it's gonna be I genuinely feel like they were like like both of them we don't want to do two seasons back to back again together like I I don't know how thought out it was maybe it's more thought out than I think but I I feel like especially the last few seasons. Like, I feel like maybe they were thinking Rachel for a while and, or maybe they were thinking Susie for a while, like before she went back to Clayton. And then they were thinking Gabby became really popular or Rachel like has more compelling breakup. But then Gabby was like very popular on the internet. Like, I feel like they were kind of probably very much between both of them. And they were like, well, they're friends. Why don't we just do them together? Um, and I'm excited. I am. It doesn't come out until like July. It doesn't start until July. And I don't read spoilers. So it's not like I'll be reading spoilers like when they start filming in like April or whatever. So yeah, that's it for me until July. Um, after this podcast episode, well, actually, I was going to say I won't be annoying about The Bachelor until July, but that's not true. If something's going on in Bachelor Nation and I want to talk about it, I probably will. But this was my first you know, time trying to give my opinion on The Bachelor. I did for a while when I wanted to do a podcast with my sister. I was like, we should do one on The Bachelor because we just, you know, we have such good rapport and we know so much about The Bachelor, but we don't live together. And I feel like Zoom is like complicated. Um, Plus, we did a podcast episode, and she was like, I mean, this is so hard. So I don't know if we're starting a podcast anytime soon, me and my sister. For now, it will simply be the Emmy Awards. So hopefully you enjoy watching me. If you are a first-time viewer and you found me because of The Bachelor content and you want to know more opinions about The Bachelor, let me know. Um, also, if you don't know who I am and you found me because of The Bachelor content, I am distantly related to Juan Pablo Galaviz. Yes, that Juan Pablo. Um, no, I've never met him in per person. <laughs> but yes, I am related to him. So, um, yeah, I have a lot to say about The Bachelor. I know a lot about it. Um, 
I'm a big Game of Roses fan. That's basically why I know so much about it. I mean, I've been watching it for a really long time, so you just kind of, like, learn things. But then, obviously, I've learned a lot more from them. And not just them, but, like, I... I consider myself a professional Bachelor viewer. Like, I watch um, the actual sport, and then I watch breakdowns of the sport. Um, I discuss it. I've written about it. I take it very seriously. And, um, yeah. So, i a big Bachelor fan. Kind of sad that it's over. I started these podcasts, just recording them Monday nights after The Bachelor. Um, and it'll be kind of weird now. To record them Monday nights without The Bachelor. Although I'm recording this one Tuesday night. Because I am not Nick Bial and I do not get early access to The Bachelor um, episodes, unfortunately. So I recorded this one Tuesday. And I have to edit all of Wednesday for it to be up Thursday. But it shouldn't be that bad because this is my sixth episode and I got it down. Anyways, the Emmy Award for Most Dramatic Bachelor Finale this time. Or for now. <laughs> goes to um I don't know what season this is and I don't know what episode it was 12 anyways um <laughs> most or actually no the Emmy award for most exciting bachelorette announcement goes to Gabby Wendy because I don't think I've ever wanted somebody to be the bachelorette more like I there have been times where I'm like okay this makes sense why the person's the bachelorette but they weren't my personal favorite from a season she has been my personal favorite like for weeks now like I am obsessed with her so I'm like thrilled um and I think it'll be really interesting for her and um Rachel to do it together part of me wishes they had each gone individual seasons but I like a little spice and I also am hoping that them being together will like Make it a more pleasant experience for each of them. Um, because I feel like when you have somebody else to like, be like, we're not, we're, they're tricking us. Like that, you know, maybe you can be less susceptible to manipulation because you're like, we're going through this together. So hopefully that's what happens. Um, so I really like both of them. Anyways, next episode of the Emmy Awards, I don't know what it's going to be about. Comment down below anything you want to hear from me. Um, please make sure to like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, follow me on Apple Podcasts or Spotify Podcasts, um, follow me on Twitter, Instagram. I will probably do a question sticker, um, if not for this ep for the next episode, then the one after that or something, of questions, advice, stuff like that. Um, yeah. Um, Gilmore Girls episode coming at some point. I'm really close to finishing it. Um, I've seen it before, but I'm really close to my re finishing my rewatch. And after I finish season seven, I think I'm going to try to write some notes down about my thoughts about the series as a whole um, and do an episode on that. But anyways, um, yeah, thank you. Um, thank you. Um, and for everyone who's been a part of this one, I'm Chris Harrison. <laughs> For everyone who's been a part of this one, I'm Emmy Cardinale. Good night. I don't know what I don't know what he used to say, but anyways. Oh, also since I linked an article that I read for one of my one the uh, for the Kenyan episode, I linked an article I wrote about my time at Kenyan. I'm gonna link down below articles I've written about The Bachelor. Specifically, the top link will be um, about the Bachelor franchise being racist because that's one of my best articles I've ever written. But anyways, for everyone who's been a part of this one, I'm Emmy Cardinale. I'll see you next week. <laughs>